Hello, my name is Sophia Honeycutt. I'll be presenting my lab final under Professor Rodopoli. My topic is, if you had a compound microscope, what would you like to take a closer look at? First on the list are the adorable tardigrades, also known as water bears or moss piglets. According to Smithsonian Magazine, tardigrades are a phylum of invertebrates under 1.2 millimeters in length which makes it hard to fathom that they're still considered an animal. Tardigrades are capable of surviving temperatures as low as negative 200 degrees Celsius and as high as 151 degrees Celsius. They also can survive changes in environmental tonicity, absence of oxygen, extreme levels of radiation, and intense levels of high and low pressure. Due to their resilience, tardigrades are even able to survive the vacuum and solar radiation of outer space. Next up under the microscope are cancer cells versus healthy cells. According to the Journal of Medical Engineering, cancer cells would appear to be mutated, abnormal in growth rate, shape, size, and arrangement, and possibly even display an unusually shaped nucleus. As we can see in the animations, the left side displays normal cell division. You can see conformed cell size and shape, an organized arrangement of cells, and the cells possess structures appropriate for their function. They also have a controlled rate of division and do not expand beyond a single layer. In contrast, on the right, we see cancer cell division. You can see variation in cell size and shape, disorganized arrangement, unusual cell structures, and a normal rate of division that expands beyond a single layer. Third on the list under the microscope would be samples of octopi tissue responsible for their complex ability to camouflage. According to Nature Education, cephalopods have three different types of color changing cells, chromatophores, eratophores, and leucophores. Chromatophores and eratophores are seen in action in the top right animation. Chromatophores are pigment sac containing organs attached to radial muscles, which can dilate within milliseconds of a stimulus, giving octopi the incredible ability to blend into the color of their environment instantaneously. Eretophore cells, as indicated by their name, reflect light as different colors depending on the observed angle, think iridescent. Leucophore cells scatter light. When they have the full spectrum, the cells actually appear white. This is much how white hair from aging appears white, but is actually transparent. You may have noted that the prefix leuco is familiar in leukocytes, also known as their white blood cells. Last but not least under the microscope would be samples from each level of toasted marshmallow. I would like to use the power of the microscope to settle an important debate. Incinerated is in fact not an acceptable flavor of roasted marshmallow. Per the verges, the science behind a perfectly toasted marshmallow, introducing a raw marshmallow to the flame introduces heat, causing sugar molecules to oxidize, releasing oxygen and hydrogen. The marshmallow is undergoing a beautiful chemical reaction known as caramelization. Too much heat and the hydrogen and oxygen burn away from the sugar molecules, leaving only gross solid black carbon. By collecting samples from each roast level, I can back a presentation with microscopic evidence that soot is no longer a marshmallow as we know it. For the essay questions, I was glad to see some of my classmates' perspectives. For Farah's prompt, what are the characteristics of genius in the smartphone era? Names of geniuses and their characteristics which made them stand out. I enjoyed her perspective of what made a genius. I absolutely agree that the ability to think abstractly, creatively, as well as always maintaining wonder are genius caliber traits. I'd also suggest that the ability to adapt to unfamiliar concepts and scenarios are indicative of genius. For Suhema's prompt, everyone knows about a septic technique now due to COVID. Ask around non-biology people in your friends and family and bound up find out how they are doing it. List some correct things and incorrect points. 
I really appreciate her explaining the correct methods of glove removal. This pandemic has been the cause of some upsetting demonstrations of cross-contamination. It also seems that when people wear gloves, they are less conscious of what they touch and wash their hands less often. Nothing replaces hand washing. And finally, for Wendy's prompt, what is the physiology of memory? Give every step in the memory formation process in our brain. I also selected the physiology of memory, but it appears that we had differed in our stages. I agree that encoding is the first step in long-term retained memory, but I would personally suggest that our sensory organs perceiving the stimulus would be the first step to a memory.